Here I get to tell you all about our first two reactions that use amines, imine formation and enamine formation. If I have time, I'll do tell you about a third reaction where we take that imine and we reduce it in what's called a reductive amination, and that is yet another way to make amines. If I still have time, I will talk about this cartoon here because this amine formation is right here where we combine a primary amine with an aldehyde. And this is going to be very important, or this is very important in terms of your eyesight, okay, and how your brain interprets uh, light when light hits your eye and changes the conformation of this. It's called Redops. But we do have to get started uh, with the first of three reactions, hopefully. This is video 10C20. And we are on reaction 10B, imine formation. Okay. In many textbooks, this reaction is put in the aldehyde and ketone chapter, or aldehyde and ketone unit. But I like to save it uh, for the amine unit. And what happens in this reaction is that you have a ketone or aldehyde. And you're going to combine it with a primary amine, H2N, for instance. And I'll make it uh, the common name for this is propylamine uh, or 1-propanamine. Some textbooks don't add acid. Some scientists use acid or some don't. Um, I do use acid. And instead of writing H2SO4, I try to hit a pH around uh, 6. Okay. And sometimes you'll see it this way. Actually, many times you'll see it this way, written in textbooks. You're going to make what's called an imine. And the imine has a carbon-nitrogen double bond. And I am going to put the R group on the less crowded side. Okay. This is called an imine. And it's recognizable because, again, of the carbon-nitrogen double bond. This reaction is reversible. And it's reversible by doing hydrolysis. When you do hydrolysis, you're cutting with water. And again, uh, we're just going to cut this piece off and get back the starting material. So if you have uh, water and acid, H2SO4, sometimes you can add heat, but all you're doing is going back to the star material. Okay. Uh, technically, this probably should be uh, pronated because you're under acidic conditions. Uh, so let's remind ourselves that amines are basic. And instead of that, Oh, is it three carbons? Yep. Instead of that uh, one propanamine, we have the protonated one propanamine. But really, all you're doing is a hydrolysis. We are interested in the imine part of this, though. And I'm going to show you the mechanism to make the imine. The hydrolysis of that imine would be the reverse. And I won't have time to show that in this uh, video. But let me show you the forward direction. This uh, mechanism, actually, it's debatable depending on what site you look at, what website you look at, or what textbook you look at. Some say the first step is direct attack by the amine. Some say uh, you should protonate the oxygen first. It's not very acidic, right? It's close to neutral. But I'm in the camp that says, go ahead and protonate. So, um, oh, this is interesting. What are we going to protonate with? Um, because I don't give you the actual acid. Well, let's say that there's HCl, a little bit of HCl. Okay. And I'll probably write that here. HCl. Okay, no big deal. All right, let's protonate this ketone. A lot of times when 
I draw mechanism I don't use me uh, reversible arrows but I think I'm going to use reversible arrows in this case because the mean formation is reversible for sure and we have this protonated carbonyl group plus the CL minus and now we're ready for the amine to attack and I'll put it here the mean you gotta use your lone pair don't forget to draw that and it's gonna come in oh almost missed and come in and hit that carbon oh I can hear some of you yelling at your screen I forgot that plus charge and we have that form a tetrahedral intermediate it looks like let's see N H H okay I don't typically like doing an intramolecular proton transfer uh, if you look at the product you know that we do have to kick out this OH group but also get rid of one of these hydrogens and yes I know it's it's plus okay um, so it'd be great if we could protonate this by deprotoning that but again I don't like doing intramolecular proton transfers because in actuality most likely it does does it in steps so we're going to deprotonate this first and you can use solvent also if we uh, know what the solvent is but that's just as good and we have now our neutral well it looks like an amine but now we want to protonate that oxygen here let me use the HCl that we just created by doing equilibrium still I really should Protonate this. Oh, this is interesting. Um, how do I kick out that water? Remember how I usually do that? I use, uh, I call it an uh, internal lone pair. Let me add the chloride. So I'm going to not have it leave on its own. But I'm going to use this lone pair to come down and kick it out. It looks like we're almost done because now we just accomplished making a double bond uh, to that carbon. Okay. And we still have this methyl group there. We actually still have this hydrogen right there. We created water, and that would be good enough to remove this proton on the nitrogen. And is that my product? It looks like that might be it. Nope, don't draw that. This is called an imine. And if you do the proton transfers in separate steps and don't do an intramolecular proton transfer, you end up having how many steps? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six steps to the imine. Okay. If you think about the hydrolysis, okay, if the last step was to deprotonate that nitrogen, then the first step in hydrolysis would be to protonate. If the second to last step was to lose water, then the second step in the reverse direction would be to gain water. So that's how you can use this drawing as a way to show your hydrolysis mechanism because I'm not going to show that here. That is imine formation. Now I think I mentioned it but I didn't really emphasize it. The amine that you're going to use should be either primary or ammonia and that's super important. So that reagent has to be either a primary amine or even smaller 
ammonia. That's if you want to form the imine. Because imagine if you had a secondary amine. If you had a secondary amine, you really wouldn't be able to make this double bond because you'd have another group here, okay? And uh, we wouldn't be able to, to draw this arrow right here, okay? We wouldn't want to make a uh, permanently charged nitrogen because imagine if there was an ethyl group here or a methyl group, okay? So you can't use a secondary amine to make the imine. Well, what does happen if we add a secondary amine to an aldehyde or ketone? Do we get anything? Yeah. You'll do the same type of reaction, same mechanism, until you get to this part here. Okay. So let me show you that reaction. This is called enamine. And when you see the product, I think you'll see why uh, people call this an enamine. So we have imines, and now we have enamine formation. How am I on time? Okay. Enamine formation. Secondary amine. So let's take the same ketone. Let's give ourselves, uh, I think the common name with this, this would be diethylamine. Okay. Two R groups. Um, now we have a secondary amine. We're still going to use a little bit of acid, uh, pH around 6. Or if you just want to write HCl, that's perfectly fine by me. And now this is a little bit tricky because you still got to have the nitrogen attack and add onto the alkyl chain. We are still going to get rid of the oxygen. Uh, most likely in the form of water. But you have these two R groups. You have those two R groups, and you're going to form a double bond. Okay? And you're going to form the more stable double bond. So the more stable double bond would be on the left because it's more substituted. I typically don't ask my students to draw all the possible enamines. Uh, I just ask them to draw the, the major enamine. Okay, um, but if you're wondering again, what is the minor enamine? Well, if we deprotonated, like did a beta hydrogen elimination to the right, your double bond would be here. Okay, but again, I typically only want the major enamine. You see why they call it an enamine? Ene for the alkene, amine for the in this case, a tertiary amine. And it will always be a tertiary amine because you're adding a secondary amine uh, to this chain, so the chain represents the third group. <clears throat> Let me go through that mechanism because now, actually, it's not clear in my head how we get this double bond. Hopefully, I could figure it out um, once we get started with the mechanism. And that's how it is for mechanisms for a lot of people, including myself. If you could get the first one or two steps, then hopefully that intermediate after the second or first step can kind of trigger a cascade uh, reaction or trigger you know, your memory into saying, oh, I see what happens next. How do we get close to the product? Well, we do X, Y, or Z. So here we have the ketone. Um, and we are going to protonate again. I wonder if, again, I don't know for sure what the mechanism is going to look like. We're just going to see if we can have a logical progression. But also I wonder if it has the same number of steps as the imine. That's just uh, the, the things that go through my head. OK, so here we have the OH+. Plus. Let me get the Cl minus out of the way. Let me label this as mechanism. All right. Well, I protonate it, and I know that I have to get a nitrogen on there somehow. That protonation makes that carbonyl group very reactive, or at least more reactive than before. 
So now I could use a nuclear file. We have that. Okay. We make the tetrahedral intermediate. This is looking very similar to what we had before. But now things are going to go a little bit different, I feel. Because now we have that. I think I have that melting group right there. Very interesting. Uh, I'm going to neutralize this, and then I'm going to protonate that. Same deal as we did before. So far, it looks very identical to what we've done for the imine formation. With time, this is, you'll get to this point where you could have any mechanism or any reaction and you could propose a mechanism based on very fundamental concepts like protonation, nucleophilic attack, activation, deprotonation. But what do I have now? I have this neutral and I created HCl. I'm going to make that a good leaving group. We know that we don't have any oxygen in our final product. So far, it seems identical. It is identical to imine formation, except now we're using secondary amine. Oh, here's the, the rub, I think. I'm not going to use this lone pair to make a double bond here to kick out water because I don't want to make yeah I don't I don't want to make a a covalent double bond between this nitrogen and this carbon to give me a permanent charge that's not what happens what does happen though is I have an opportunity to do a beta hydrogen elimination pretend that this is the leaving group this is the alpha position this is the beta so now I need uh, something to grab that proton. What can I use? Oh, how about this? We could use another amine. Um, that's basic, right? Um, eventually, when we kick out this water, we could use water in uh, the the uh, what doing the following molecules that go through this process. But oh man, let me go. Let me use the amine. I forgot what we're doing. We're doing, um, we're trying to make a double bond right there. So we're going to grab this proton, collapse this bond to make a double bond, and then kick this out. Did I accomplish what I need to accomplish? We could use this protonate amine to protonate uh, the next carbonyl group. All right, so that's fine. Eventually, we will be able to react all the amines if it's a one-to-one -one ratio. Um, we get the enamine. That's good. And again, my curiosity was, do we have the same number of steps? For the imine formation, we had six steps. I think we might have less. One, two, three four, five. The reason why we have less is that we there was no hydrogen here to remove like we did with the imine formation. This is the last step right here. Imine, <clears throat> enamine. Okay. Enamines are good uh, because they could be used in synthesis to alkylate at the alpha position. I don't typically teach that. Um, I'd rather just use an enolate uh, to alkylate at the alpha position, but um, there are advantages that I'm not going to get into why you want to use the anamine to add an alkyl group at that alpha carbon.
This is really the alpha carbon. If you look at the original carbonyl group, yeah, that was the alpha carbon right there. Okay. Um, so don't worry about that. Um, what I'm more interested in is the imine formation, again, because of that eyeball, um, because imines are definitely in your, uh, they make up the rods, rods that are sensitive to light in your eyeballs. Hopefully we get to that. But there was that third reaction, reaction 10C, oh sorry, 10D. I'm not going to go through the mechanism of this, but it's definitely a reaction that organic students should know. This is reductive amination. It's going to look very familiar. Let me get the same ketone, okay, so we could compare these three reactions. And we're going to use NH3. Oh, no. How about this? Let's use that same primary mean that we did for immune formation. So, hmm. What are we doing? Well, I'm going to add a new reagent you probably have not seen. NABH. You've heard of NABH4, sodium borohydride. This is NABH3CN. This is called uh, sodium cyanoborohydride. It's a reducing agent, but it's a, it's a fine-tuned for this type of reaction. So we don't have BH4, we have BH3CN. And again, we're going to have a little bit of acid, and we'll just call this pH around 6. We're not going to do the mechanism, but we'll discuss the intermediates. Look what we get. See, I'm about to draw the imine, but instead of drawing the double bond, I'm going to say, well, it got reduced, and here we have now a secondary amine. And this is interesting because you're targeting the part of the molecule that has this oxygen, the carbonyl group. And if you want an amine right at that position with any R group that you want, you're going to use either primary amine or you could even use ammonia. But you have to go through the imine, right? The imine only uses primary amines or ammonia. Let me show you what's happening. Or at least draw a couple of intermediates. Yes, you are making the imine, it's called in situ, within the round bond of flask, but you're not isolating it. So you have this, oops, what do we have? And this. Okay. But also you're going to protonate it, and let's use HCl. Okay, so we are having a nitrogen now that's positive. Okay, and then you're going to reduce it with this hydride reagent. <clears throat> I'm not going to show you the mechanism. Um, uh, technically, you're you're actually making this first, possibly, and maybe there's an equilibrium being established. But when it's protonated, that's when it is going to be reduced. Okay. This is called the iminium, has a special name, iminium cation. So again, we have so many ways to make amines, right? The Gabriel synthesis, the reduction of nitriles, the reduction of amides, and now we have reductive amination. It just depends, you know, what your starting material is and where you want that amine to be. Okay, um, here I want the mean to be where the oxygen is. Okay, and also it depends whether you want a primary, secondary, or tertiary amine, right? You can't make a secondary amine from the Gabriel synthesis or from nitrile reduction. So that limits you into either doing something like reductive amination or reduction of an amide. Remember, if this was coming from an amide, you would want to make the amide maybe with the carbonyl group right here. Right, and then you reduce it off with LiAlH4, lithium aluminum hydride. There are so many ways to make amines. 
Um, and that's useful because I found this on a website. These are all, not all, but these are a bunch of drugs, some in clinical trials, some approved, that have amines in them. Now, a lot of them are in cyclic systems, right? There's an amine, there's an amine. Oh, what is this? That almost looks like very imine-like, right? Very imine-like. And here's a tertiary amine up here. Okay. All types of uh, indications uh, for different uh, treatments for different diseases. How about this? Here we have an amide uh, right there. What that means is uh, a likely synthesis is if you had maybe this acid chloride on the right, and now we need an amine. We actually need a primary amine on the left to react with the acid chloride. So you could play these games where you, you know, look, go backwards and say, well, where are the key bonds that were made, and how could we make this um, lomidopide, cholesterol-lowering drug? Well, one possibility is you had those two pieces, the amine on the left, and here's my note card, uh, maybe an acid chloride on the right. Okay, okay so that's uh, a bunch of drugs that have amines in them. And then lastly, let's go back to that picture of the eyeball. Now that we've seen imine formation, do you see here we have a carbonyl group plus a primary amine uh, on the protein opsin. I'm not sure how big opsin is, but it's pretty sizable. And you're just appending this retinal, this aldehyde, via what? Via an imine bond. Via an imine bond. And the way they named it, it looks like they took part of retinal and part of opsin and called it rhodopsin. These molecules line the back of your eye, and when light impinges on it, there is a conformational change. And I want to show you that conformational change. Uh, let me go to this picture from a website. There. It's the same molecule. It's uh, the ret retinal part of rhodopsin. And... What happens here is that if everything is zigzaggy, everything's trans, that's if light hits it. Now, if it's in the dark, it assumes this, and it's the middle double bond. So let's remember that. Um, when it's dark, it's in the cis conformation. When it's light, when light hits it, it's in the trans, and the signal goes to your brain. Okay, so when light hits it, it turns trans. Let's go back to my illustration. So this is drawn right here if a light is hitting it, okay? Because if it's in the dark, it's this double bond that goes from uh, trans to cis, okay? So that's what I wanted to say concerning this cartoon. Um, I think I'm going to put up at least one more video on amines, uh, so be on the watch for that. It's another... Uh, important reaction uh, that I think you'll find very interesting.